Hello and welcome to another video on beginner tutorial series and in today's video we are going to learn one more power query function and the function is table.skip. What does table.skip does? First of all table.skip takes the table as an argument and then it takes an optional condition. The, this is the condition which is going to decide how many uh, rows it need to skip. So you can give the number of rows like 1, 2 then number of rows will be skip or you can give a condition that uh, once this condition is satisfied rest of the rows can be given up means before this condition is satisfied all the rows will be skipped and finally it is going to return you a table so it takes a table and for few more arguments i'm going to return a table a power query table function so now you can see some examples have been given then this part of the code is basically nothing but the uh, table itself and then we are saying skip one row so table dot skip and what we are getting here as you can see here that we are getting here the first row skip now here in this one the first two rows has been skipped you can see again this example the two rows this is nothing but a table only we can use our own existing tables and then this is the code to skip now there's one more which has been given here now you can see the two rows has been skipped here now one more has been given where the condition has been used now this time we have not so this is a very big table here it has been given now the condition has been given each price is greater than 25 okay so that's where the 25 it should be greater than 25 and then we have table dot skip and then this is what is going to give so first condition itself is greater than 25 so we are expecting data from the second row so 5 25 200 220 uh, 3.25 3.25 was coming again so that's coming from the second row so now time has come that we jump out of the power bi and try this out so what we are going to do is we are going to um, go to power bi and try out the function table dot skip so let me go to the power bi and in power bi i would look like to go to power query so under the home tab transform data transform data will open power query for me and once power query is open what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a new source blank query to perform this operation so i'm going to say table dot skip here so i can say table skip uh, so right now the code would be whatever it's existing but let's look at one of the tables which is available with us so first operation is table one let's see if we can simply so we have a few columns here like having value one two three having a date also and having a, a you know basically let's say values like test 21 or let's say sequence 5 10 10 15 so we have a lot of uh, matter here to you know test it out so let's first of all try with you know the simple skip so right click and advanced editor should open the advanced editor and where we can write down our own script that's how we are writing down our own script so we say table dot skip once i type this i can give the first argument as the table so i say table one and the second argument i give skip the one row And once I get here, you can see the one row has been skipped. Now here you can see the two arguments, the table name, which is the already existing table name. We are taking a reference here and then we are skipping the one row. So it's there. I can actually go ahead and change it in the formula bar itself. And in the formula bar, I can say two, two rows are skipped. I say three. Let's see when it go to error. I say 33. So it's a table is empty. I say three also it should give table is empty. So I can give more and it's just going to give me table is empty. It's not going to throw an error. So that's the good thing. So we can say simply two. Now the time has come that we write down some condition. So we can write down some condition here. So we will say, or I can simply write down here each. We can say SEQ column is greater than greater than 10 let's say now here when because we are typing in the formula bar it's not going any suggest little bit would be difficult now we are saying each sequence column greater than 10 so first row itself the condition has failed so it has started giving us all the data so we say so we should have the first row should pass the condition then it will go to the second row okay so what condition we can have there where it says uh, it will pass so we say it is actually less than 10 
okay so at least the first row will pass the second row it will fail so now you can see the moment it fails then it starts showing the result now let's say any other condition let's say greater than equal to 10 we say so the first time the condition will fail on the third row so the moment the condition fail it starts showing the result till the time condition is true it's not going to show us the result and that's what you have seen in the example also now what we can go go do go ahead and do is basically we can bring in that particular data which we have seen here now we can test that out also so let's bring in this data now we will take one more table and just test out the sample data now new source blank query and we can double click and say table skip one advanced editor okay so here we add this code and right now we are expecting that other than first one it's not going to give us so it's going to give us anything other than the first one so now let's go back to advanced editor and let's say um, so if we say greater than 5 greater than or equal to 5 what happens So now if you look at the data here, advanced editor, see this was greater than equal to 5, this was greater than equal to 5, this is also greater than equal to 5, this is also greater than equal to 5, this is greater than equal to 5, so the condition, this is not greater than equal to 5, so that's where the condition has failed and from there you are getting the data. So this is how you give your conditions and once the condition fails then it comes. Now let's say if I say greater than less than 100. Now less than equal to 100. So first condition is definitely going to satisfy. And then less than equal to 100, few conditions will satisfy. So let's look here where we'll say less than equal to 100. What happens? Less than equal to 100. So first condition is true. So let's look at it. First is true, second is true, third is true, fourth one is where it's failing for first time. And from there you are getting the data. So this is how you this is works. So stable dot skip. So go ahead and try this function out and do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.